Hello everyone, this is CY once again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today we're going to review um, the La Pavoni machines, but not the level machines. It's a um, semi-automatic uh, dual boiler rotary pump um, style kind of machine. It's quite similar to uh, some of the other brands out there. Um, I would say that uh, on my first impression, the machine is very, very heavy. It's very, very beefy in terms of the stainless steel that it uses. It's, uh, I would say it's one of the uh, machines with the thickest stainless steel plates which I've seen so far. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Smack uh, La Pavone Singapore for sending me this machine for review. And uh, we are glad uh, to be working with Smack uh, Singapore as well as La Pavone Singapore to actually be their dealers in dealing uh, these machines. Uh, I will I will be testing these machines uh, as much as I can and give you my honest uh, opinion whether these machines are actually worth uh, for you to purchase. So without further ado, let's get to it. Right, what you're looking at the machine is the machines from La Pavoni. Is the model of this machine machine is actually the La Pavoni Botticelli Speciality. Um, it it comes with a dual boiler rotary pump. Um, I'm really surprised by how fast the machine heats up from machine that's totally cool to 92 degrees Celsius on the brew boiler and 124 degrees on the steam boiler takes less than 10 minutes. It's even faster than my um, BBM Domo Bar Super. So I'm really pleasantly surprised by how fast the actual machine gets to the temperature. And you can see uh, within 10 minutes, the steam is ready. Um, the brew is ready and we are ready to make coffee. So I'm really surprised by how fast the machine actually heats up. On the first look, it is a traditional Italian style machines whereby on the left hand side, you will see the brew uh, pressure gauge and on the right hand side, you will see a steam boiler pressure gauge. And now uh, my steam boiler is still climbing up. It's actually around 1.3 bar, 1.2 to 1.3 bar, which is perfect for my steaming. And um, what makes these machines uh, stand above the other standard dual boiler is the flow control. So this machine is able to do flow control. So let me just show you very quickly. If you switch on the uh, your lever, Right, the half level does nothing, similar to the uh, um, uh, Lilit de la Bianca uh, or the Lilit series of espresso machines with a lever. Right, the lever does nothing when it's half switch on. Right, you have to engage full pump, full lever up. Right, you can see that I can actually totally restrict the flow of uh, the brew to zero, almost zero, and then I can actually max out the flow if I want to. Right, so this is something similar that uh, you see on the Lilit Bianca. And you can hear the palm is actually very smooth and very silent. It's a really uh, robust rotary palm. And the machine is actually currently priced before discount, I think should be around slightly above $4,000. However, I believe that uh, Smack Singapore is running a promotion. I think this machine is currently priced around $3,000 plus, which makes it very competitive 
as compared to uh, other machines such as Bianca and other dual boilers in the market. Um, just look at how beefy the machine is. Right, you can see that the, the blue boiler, the temperature drop once I uh, release the water from the group head. So now it's, the temperature is again climbing up. Uh, it's climbing up really fast. Now it's really reaching 90 degrees. So I believe, um, yeah, you can see now it's back to 92 degrees Celsius. So let's make a cup of coffee. And then I'm going to use a grinder also from La Pavoni. On the Outlook, it looks like the Eureka Minion series of tile grinder. Uh, why do I say so? Because the grind adjustment is over here. And you can see that it's a very familiar interface here whereby it's a touch screen whereby you can actually select between single dose and double dose. Um, engage button is over here. Press to engage and then press again to stop. So this is very typical of the Eureka. But what makes it stand out is the, is the round cylindrical kind of body and the super glaring kind of uh, chrome uh, color that's on the outside. Uh, the whole machine looks really uh, futuristic because of the design, right? But how well it grinds, uh, just let's just take a look. Um, let's grind about 18 grams of coffee from here, and then let's pull a shot to see the shot quality. Right, before that, let's uh, zero out our, our power filter. Right, it's already zero out. So now let's dose. The grinder is actually pretty silent in my opinion. Right, you can pause, I can you can do really shoot and then you can engage again. Right. In my opinion, it's pretty silent. And I can actually do this without uh, spilling the coffee. Oh, okay, I, I accidentally uh um okay, let's uh, see how much coffee are we dosing out first. Okay, this is about 18.7, 18.6 gram, right? So you can see about 12.5 seconds, I'm getting about 18 grams to 90 grams of coffee, uh, which is ideal for my extractions. Let's do a little bit of pop preparation. There's actually not much uh, coffee clumping. Right, the basket I think is not marked for 18 gram. Uh, it's probably 17 to 17 grams to 80 gram because you can see by dosing about 18.6 gram, the coffee is already standing up there. Let's just use the constant temper from MHW3 bomber. Right, so now let's try to lock out the powder filter and pull an espresso shot and see how it goes. Start. Uh, what it doesn't have is actually the timer. This machine doesn't have any timing functions, so you have to rely on your the timing function on your scale to actually monitor your extraction time. I'm going to do a slow pre infusion. Uh, the pressure gauge here doesn't behave like what you have seen on Bianca. You can see that it goes to about nine bar. All right, I'm going to increase the flow. Right, watching out for my extraction time. Right, I'm hitting about 25 seconds and I'm getting about 30 grams of coffee. Right, 30 seconds, I'm getting about 38 grams of coffee, 30, 38 to 39 grams. Um, so um, I'm actually hitting the 1 to 2 ratio. Alright, so freshly brewed espresso, let's uh, give you a try. Wow, full body. Wow. There's no bitterness at the back. 
a little bit of nutty feel. It's really well balanced. Slightly acidic. Sweetness is there. Oh, by the way, this is the um, the single origin natural coffee from Brazil, right? So um, coffee is good. Um, slightly on the cooler side, maybe I should have waited slightly longer, right, for the machine to heat up. But within ten minutes, it's able to pull a shot like that. I'm pretty impressed, right? A very good espresso. So let's move on to make the second cup of coffee, right? Let's do a maybe a latte or cappuccino, depending on the. Um, uh, quality of the milk by froth. So let's get uh, to making that the milk based coffee. Right before that, let's look at the quality of the puck that's been extracted. Where you can see the puck is really dry. So let me if I can pick out the espresso part, let me show you how thin the part is. Right, you can see how thin the part is. Right, this is probably 17 gram basket max. So I'm actually overdosing slightly. You can see how thin the part is, but it's really fully extracted. Right, you can see. Right, and uh, when I knock out the part, you can see my photo filter is actually pretty clean. There's nothing, uh, not much coffee powder actually stain on it. Right, so let's dose another um, 18 grams. So again, let's zero our weighing scale. Reset the timer. All right. Let's measure again. Alright, we are taking about 17 grams this time and see how the extraction is. And let's get ready our latte cup. Um, probably this is an espresso cup. Uh, not espresso cup, I mean the cappuccino cup. But uh, whether it's a cappuccino or latte depends on the milk quality. So uh, when I froth the milk, let's see how it will go. Right, same thing. Let's do a little bit of pup preparation. You can see from the quality of the grind, right? Um, actually, the W W T T is actually not really necessary. I don't see a lot of clumping uh, if you dose directly into the portal filter. Right, so this is before tamping. So let's tamp it down. Right, constant 30 pounds of pressure. The MHW flash, uh, flash temper. Let's hope the scale can actually be fitted below. Yes, it does. Same thing, let's zero out everything. Start the timer. Let's go with zero flow first. Do a slow print fusion. Ramp up the pressure. This time the flow is fast. So I, I, I think Probably up dosing or grind finer is the way to get a better shot of espresso. But for now, well, I'm actually testing the, the quality of the milk steaming from this machine. So um, as you can see, it's capable of pulling good espresso shots. But now let's see how the steaming uh, is for this machine. All right, so let's uh, push the steam first. 
The machine comes with a two tip steam, uh, two two hole steam tip. So let me get a cloth to be ready. All right. So the milk. Let's try to steam the milk. Very easy to steam. And the um, steam knob is, has a spring inside, I believe. So it's uh, springing back as I uh, return the steam back to zero position. Right, so you can see the, the milk quality. Right, so now let's try to do a little bit of latte art to see whether this is possible. Okay, wait, let me get the angle right for you. Okay, it's not too bad for the first attempt. So you get a very good cup of latte or cappuccino depending on how dense the form you want to steam to. So next let's taste the coffee and see how creamy the, the, the milk is. Right, so let's try the coffee. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, pretty creamy. Just that the coffee is a little under extracted so um, the full intensity of the, the the coffee at the back isn't really coming up so i taste a lot of the sweetness from the milk instead so um, besides the poor espresso that's being pulled because i underdose a little bit um, but the texture of the milk is good mm. so overall it's still uh, uh, capable of uh, producing decent very good espresso indeed so i um, just have to get the uh, dose right and grind to the um, to the level that it co that's compatible with your extractions and that you should be able to do pretty well if you get a lot of money, a Potocelli specialty. So this machine has all the things you need. Um, um, it is, I would say that it is built to for commercial quality, even though um, um, probably uh, it may not be able to do large volume because I can see that the temperature, uh, the brew boiler temperature actually drops after I pull a shot. But for home baristas, um, you do not pull shot as fast as we do in cafe. So I believe this is more than capable of uh, uh, fulfilling all your needs at home. Right? Even if you have a small party, I think it should be fine as well. Right? So this is CEO once again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll be doing uh, more updates uh, as I use this machine more often. Right? Uh, I'll give you my honest feedback on whether this machine is able to keep up with my needs as a home barista. Uh, thank you for joining me, right? So uh, I'll see you very soon again. I have another machine. I think it's the standard Botticelli. Um, let me unbox it and then share with every one of you very soon, right? So uh, remember to hit the like, uh, subscribe button if you like our video content and I'll see you very soon in the next video.